Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week of the Maryland Made Podcast. The Maryland Made Podcast provides timely, relevant, and practical information to empower student athletes to explore their potentials and pursue their passions. On this week's episode, we're chatting it up with student athletes discussing what it means to be more than an athlete, specifically touching on athletic injuries and how it can affect your mental health. Um, we have some amazing guests today, including Garrett Capps, um, Sophia Antonopoulos, and Dr. Christy Hall. I'm going to let them introduce themselves in a second. Um, then we'll get right into a discussion about their journey down the red and gold brick road. Um, so to start off, Garrett, could you tell us a little bit more about your story and how you got to Maryland? Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Garrett. Um, I, uh, I'm i from Bowie, Maryland, uh, right down the road from UMD. Uh, so I've always been exposed to the university. Um, and I always came here for like camps and practices and stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I always had the dream of, uh, you know, representing my home state and, uh, you know, repping, repping that flag on my back and on my chest. So, uh, yeah. Perfect. Sophia, you want to go next? Sure. Yeah. So I'm Sophia Antonopoulos. Um, I'm also from Maryland. I'm a little further in Towson, Maryland, but still only about an hour away. So have that same kind of hometown feel. Um being a member of the lacrosse team is, I think, really unique um, being in the state of Maryland because growing up, it was like every little girl and little boy was playing lacrosse. So being able to come to the University of Maryland, which is kind of known as like the lacrosse capital of the world, was just kind of an, an experience I couldn't turn down. So for me, it was just always a dream. Every little girl looks up to the Maryland lacrosse team and being able to stay close to home while getting this unreal college experience was just a dream that I've always had. Great. Um, and Dr. Hall, could you tell us a little bit more about your current role with UMD and why you're so passionate about mental health? Um, not only so much in student athletes, but just as a whole. For sure. Thanks for having me. Um, again, my name is Dr. Christy Hall. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. And my role here at the University of Maryland is I'm the director of sports psychology here, the division of sports psychology. Um, this is kind of like a dream job for me. Um, I grew up playing sports in high school and in undergraduate and graduate. Um, I played intramural sports and uh, also participated in in um, in triathlons and other sports and bodybuilding competitions. Um, and just so the correlation between sports and mental health is really important to me. Um, you know, we're going to talk about it a little later today, I believe, but like injury, post-injury and how that affects mental health. And so I'm extremely passionate about mental health um, because it's a part of our everyday lives that people just generally do not, um, they aren't aware of sometimes and maybe don't have the insight about. Um, so, you know, college life is difficult as it is. So um, helping to bridge the gap between mental health, um, you know, traversing through college as well as sports and, you know, working with, with student athletes, that's very near and dear to my heart. Perfect. Um, so now that we know a little bit more about each of you and your story, um, can you tell us when you started playing your sport and why you wanted to pursue it at the collegiate level? I know, Sophia, you touched on this a little bit. Yeah, I can expand on this just a little bit more. Um, I think I started playing, gosh, I want to say anywhere around eight to 10 years old. Um, like I said, it was it was just the thing to do growing up in Maryland. So I had a stick in my hand from as, for as long as I can remember. And wanting to play at the collegiate level, I just think in middle school and high school, it was just so fun for me. You know, I think that's something that um, a lot of people don't talk about is that side of mental health when it comes to sports in college is that it becomes a lot more stressful. There's no denying that. So for me, it was just something I love doing. It was so much fun and it was something that I was good at and I knew I had the chance to continue on and I wanted to do so. Perfect. Garrett? Yeah. Um. So I'm, I'm on the wrestling team at the university and uh, my uh, journey in the sport started when I was in seventh grade, uh, which is a bit later than uh than the average wrestler um at least at this level most of them are doing it while they're still in diapers um so you know a lo little bit behind the curve on that but uh yeah i mean just uh you know i got into it to uh help my skills in a uh in a different sport um but uh, uh i got through um made it to like my conference tournament final 
and I lost uh, in my first year and I came off the mat. I was upset. And, uh, you know, I, I had an agreement with my dad that my first year I was like, like, okay, I'm only going to do it for one year. Like, like, you know, it's, it's just, it's just something to help me get better at, at uh, my main sport. And then uh, I came off the mat and I'm like, like, dad, I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna beat this kid. I, I'm, I'm gonna win championships and all this kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, just like, uh, kind of like straight off the jump, uh, you know, just wanting to be, wanting to be really good, wanting to be the best I could at this and, uh, in my arena. And then, uh, yeah, um, you know, again, I was behind the curve a little bit, but, uh, um, you know, started really pushing it, really getting after it. And then, uh, uh, you know, with starting the sport, found out it was a thing in college. And, uh, you know, I was watching like the national tournament uh, while I was still in middle school. And I'm like, you know, kind of like a kid, like, like, like just starstruck, kind of like, oh man, like big stage, big lights, all this, like the crowd and the roars. I'm like, I want to do that. Like, I, I want to go to college. Um, and like, I want to do this. And I want to I get good enough where uh, I can get a scholarship to do what I love, which is wrestling and pursuing a great education. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I just worked hard and uh, uh, got to be able to do that, uh, you know, at a great institution like Maryland, uh, you know, got to be on the wrestling team and got to have a scholarship for my sport. So. Perfect. And Dr. Hall, knowing more about your background and the fact that you own your own business, what made you want to make the transition to work um, at U University of Maryland Athletics? Um, so I still do own my own business and um, I enjoy that aspect, but I love working on a team. I'm a people person um, with my businesses is completely or primarily virtual. So working on a team, working and, and with my business and with my private practice, I do uh, work with athletes individually. Um, but I love working on a team. So I like my treatment team here that we have the other clinicians on staff with sports psychology. I, I really adhere to um, a multidisciplinary model, which is, you know, working with other clinicians and doctors um, from other disciplines. So I, I really encourage that. And, you know, you can't get that in a private practice world. So I enjoy working, you know, here, not only with the student athletes, love, love, love working with you guys. Um, and also love, you know, learning, working with, encouraging, um, learn, interacting with other, other, like I said, disciplines. Um, so social work and the medical doctors and the athletic trainers, that's something that, you know, working together just like helps me to get better. And also I believe helps me and we help each other to help the student athletes, which is, you know, if it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't be here. Perfect. Um, so that covered a little bit of the before Maryland portion. So we're going to transition into the between section. So this is going to talk about your time at Maryland. Um, so since being at Maryland, what has been your favorite experience this far? It can be anything. I got one right off the top of my head. Uh, last year, we made it to the final four, which was just there's really nothing you can do to imagine what that is like until you're in that moment, especially being um, a woman in sports. You know, we typically don't have the biggest fan base. We don't have those huge crowds. We can't fill stadiums. But at that final four, we had thousands of fans. The seats were packed. We had people aligning the fences because there were not enough seats. Um, it was, it was just an unreal experience. And I know that is something that people dream of even getting to, you know, even go watch one and being able to be a part of it. We didn't have the outcome we wanted, but just getting that experience is something that I will cherish forever. Perfect. Yeah. Um, kind of, I'm kind of stuck between two right now. Um, but both of them are from this year. Uh, the first one is, uh, um, our team beating Purdue, uh, earlier. Um, that was our first big 10 dual win since, I think it was like 2016 um so like we've been in the conference for like 10 years and uh the recent history hasn't been too great for us but uh you know we have we got this new staff they're in their fourth year they're really uh changing the game for what it means to be a wrestler at maryland and uh you know that that duel getting our first big 10 win in a, a long while uh yeah it, it was bittersweet not being able to like actively be a part of it, you know, like go out there and try and try and win an individual match for it. But, uh, 
you know, just like the excitement of it, uh, that, you know, there's videos on media of like our coach jumping in the air, like his, his head looks like a tomato cause he's screaming and all pumped up and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was, you know, just being on the team, being able to experience that moment, whether I'm, you know, on, uh, on the sideline or if I was in that moment, that was just something really special. And the other one was, uh, bringing back beauty and the beast, uh, something really cool that we do here that I don't think many other places in America do where, uh, we have a wrestling match and gymnastics has a meet at the same time going. And, uh, um, it was just really cool. Um, that was something that I came to and watched, uh, when I was in middle school and high school, um, you know, just having like, like so much going on, having like a lot of people in the crowd, all, all the cheering from guys slamming each other on the mat to girls hitting a stick and stuff. Like it was, it's, you know, and then finally like having it back from, uh, everything with COVID and then, uh, you know, just like being in the, being in the moment, being on the floor for it was huge. That was a really cool experience. Perfect. And both of you, um, both of your favorite moments were sport related. So what are some of the extracurricular activities you guys have participated in outside of your sport, if any? Yeah, I think my favorite has been, uh, being on the executive board of the pre-health Terps. Um, which is a student athlete run organization that kind of guides any other student athletes who are interested in working some in some type of healthcare field. Um, and I am the director of alumni relations for the pre-health Terps, which I think is a really unique role because I have had the chance to interact with alums of Maryland who have been student athletes and not um, who are currently working in the healthcare field or either in school for it. Um, and it's just, it has been such a cool experience. For me, it really, it totally has changed my future. Um, I came into college wanting to go to med school. I was pre-med, it was all I wanted and joined the pre-health Terps group my freshman year. And that is where I actually learned what a physician assistant was. And I'm starting PA school this July. So it really came full circle for me. I learned what the position was. I didn't even know what it was until I got to this organization, learned about it and was like, wait, this is, exactly what I want with my life and just got accepted into school this past year so that's been awesome that's exciting congratulations I would say I would say my uh uh my favorite one so far has been uh um working with the uh the PTs that um that come to Maryland um I mean obviously you know uh, I work with them a lot, having been an injured student athlete, but uh, I also uh, want to pursue being a physical therapist as a professional career. And um, uh, over the summer uh, last year, I, uh, you know, as I was do, doing rehab, like first thing in the morning, and then the rest of the day, I'd be with them, helping them with their rehab of other Terps, um, you know, seeing all the different kinds of injuries, um, like helping set up drills, picking their brains about, uh, you know, what the path to uh, DPT school, um, you know, seeing how uh, everything works as a practicing doctor in physical therapy. So, um, you know, kind of like a kid in a candy store, I was just like, oh, like grabbing at everything. Um, and it, it was really cool, uh, you know, just to like really experience and expand um, on my passion for uh, what I want to do professionally. That's great. And Dr. Hall, since your team has rebuilt, um, I will say this is something that my staff talks about a lot, is you all have been very front-facing um, and seem to provide a lot of preventative services. Um, why do you think it's so important for student-athletes to tap into different resources available, even if they're not facing an injury or a hardship? Um, well, that's just one of the things for mental health-wise in general, right? Um, we're always trying to be preventative. Um, you know, a lot of times it, it if, you know, we are in crisis mode, it's kind of difficult to kind of like tap into, you know, the resources and just to kind of get your mind focused there on what it is that you need to kind of do um, for recovery. So we like to, like we said, be proactive, you know, let student athletes know who we are, where we are, starting building, you know, having that basis and good foundation, good foundation for good mental health um, before you have a crisis, because, again, like it's it's a good foundation, right? So that when a crisis does occur, um, you kind of have a, a, a better better set of skills, 
Um, you kind of have a better, you know, support system maybe that you wouldn't have had previously prior to injury. Um, and so it's just kind of a good, you know, foundation to have rather than like going into crisis mode, like, oh my gosh, what I do, it's 911, the house is on fire, you know, things are going to out of control. And instead of doing that, you can kind of tap into, well, let's calm down. We, you know, we kind of built these things up. We, we know how to meditate now. We know how to, you know, focus now. We know what things we do have inside and outside of our control because we've done this before a crisis or before injury. So we certainly like to be um, proactive. And if you have those relationships built prior to a crisis, um, then it's, kind of easier to in, to um, move forward with that rapport. If you're trying to build rapport while you're in crisis, that's really difficult, right? But if we already have those relationships built, you know, for our team, um, each person within the mental health um, or, men or psychology, sports psych department um, is assigned to a specific team. And so if you already know who to go to and you already have a relationship built with that person, um, prior to injury, then it's a little bit easier to kind of, like I said, move forward and, you know, talk those things through. You have a rapport built, you have some trust built. So it's easier to kind of do that, um, you know, once something does arise. Right. And that's so important. And I know like the Maryland made staff and all of the student athletes are super appreciative of that. Um, Garrett and Sophia, a big part of why I was so excited to have the two of you on the podcast is because I believe you offer a perspective that the student athlete population doesn't really talk about. Um, so this is the impact that athletic injuries can have on your mental health. As someone who has gone through something similar, like I can definitely relate. And, um, although I was injured as a student athlete, like it allowed me to fill a void that, uh, things like different student organizations allowed me to fill that void of not being able to compete. So, and that even led to me working in the student athlete development space. Um, Dr. Hall, can you share some of the statistics as to how frequently like career ending injuries occur and maybe some of the most prevalent mental health issues that can arise from them? Um, yeah, so when I was looking up statistics, um, I'm gonna just talk about the the primary injuries that tend to occur. So, um, the primary career ending injuries are um, ACL tears or ACL injuries, um, stress fracture, stress fractures. Though those occur quite frequently, um, and spinal cord injury. Unfortunately, for instance, like football or you know wrestling, um, those contact sports, shin splits, um, a lot of issues with knees, degenerative knees. You know, um, like you guys said. A lot of our athletes have been, you know, engaging in in sports since they were like, well, how you put it, Garrett, in diaper in diapers, right? So like mm -hmm. having these injuries, um, you know, and affecting your knees, those are certainly, you know, most prevalent, along with ankle injuries. Um, and so let's talk about some statistics. So among NCAA division athletes, 29.3% of injuries result from overuse. So like we said, like knee injuries, you know ankles, stress fractures, you know, you've been utilizing your body for your whole life. <laughs> and now you're in division one. And as you guys know, it's a lot of stress. You practice all the time. Um, you're playing at a, at a high level. So that overuse is, is very um, common. And so then 70.7% are acute injuries. Um, and then female athletes are most likely to experience overuse injuries. Um, about 62% of those, and one of the most common collegiate athlete injuries overall um, at 30% of all instances. Um, and let's see. The collegiate sports that rack up the most injuries include wrestling at 1.3%, gymnastics at 1%, and then soccer at 1.2%. I'm sorry, 1.7%, just regarding overuse. Um, and then regarding head injury, football is the highest among head injuries. Perfect. And what are some of the mental health um, issues that you would say you've seen come from some of these injuries? Um, so the mental health issues that that tend to come up in these injuries are, um, well, most common, those are anxiety, um, issues with depression, 
Um, being out of the game a long time can cause stress on a, on an athlete, on an individual player, not only on the athlete, but also coaching staff, because, you know, it might be, you know, one of their top players and not knowing what to do. Um, and then the athlete themselves, you know, this is not only has it been like, your co like oftentimes it's also not only is your your sport what you just enjoy and what you're good at and what you like to do it can also be your coping mechanism too right so um having both those things taken away from you certainly causes like i said the stress the anxiety the depressive type symptoms um and then acceptance of like you know fans expectations um you have concerns of loss of money ticket sales you know, um, we have NIL now in collegiate sports, obviously, you know, not being paid um, for certain things or like doing your recovery period. Um, and then because of these reasons, sometimes, oftentimes, athletes tend to come try to come back to their sport before they're fully healed. And so that causes even more injury, right? So like, oftentimes you're at a crossroads and sometimes you don't, there it the answer is you don't know, right? Like I've met with two athletes just this, just within the past two days, one this morning and one yesterday, like not knowing like, well, if I continue, um, you know, I could damage it even more, but if I don't, then, you know, again, I'll lose a season or, you know, being afraid that they're, you know, not gonna, um, like continue on like athleticism. You feel like you might be losing some things. Um, so all that obviously affects your mental health. And then there's the issue too, you know, like if, if you have an injury in season, being, a, being you know, afraid of, well, what are other people going to think? And, you know, I can't travel with the team and I won't be able to, you know, kind of understand what, you know, my other uh, teammates are going through and, you know, kind of like that fear of missing out type of thing. Um, so it's a lot that goes on with that. And then you tend to kind of lose motivation um just overall not just in your sport but also that then can affect you academically so you know some athletes are like you know I'm here just for my sport unfortunately and then you know if I don't have my sport then I don't have anything so it you know can be obviously a downward spiral and affects all areas of your life um and also leading into to sleep and nutrition you know sometimes um you can have Poor nutrition because now you know you're coping ineffectively. Um, you know, not eating a proper diet. Um, your sleep could be off severely. So it, you know, the injuries, you know, kind of affects you mental health wise all the way around. Definitely, it can definitely um, be a lot. Sophia and Garrett, can the two of you share your journey with us and how your specific injury impacted your mental health? Yeah. So um, my injury is a little less common and a little different. Uh, so I was my freshman year here in the fall, I was diagnosed with a vascular condition in my legs. Um, it's called popliteal artery entrapment syndrome. So basically the popliteal artery is your main artery that runs down the back of your leg. And essentially every time I ran or exerted my muscles, my calf muscle would compress the artery behind my knee. So it would cut off the blood flow to my lower legs. So every time I ran, every time I did anything in the sport of lacrosse, I would get um, burning, cramping, numbness in my feet, my calves. Um, and this is actually something that I had dealt with since middle school. Um, mm -hmm. But with it being so rare, I, we could never get a diagnosis for it. I was told it was shin splints or um, it's often misdiagnosed with compartment syndrome, which is a little bit more common. Um, but so yeah, my freshman year, we finally got the diagnosis and I decided to have my first surgery the winter of my freshman year. And then I did my other leg the spring of my freshman year. So at that point I was planning on just redshirting my freshman year. Um, I came back that summer and started training again. And unfortunately all my symptoms came back. So, um, after re-meeting with my doctors and, you know, creating a new game plan, I ended up getting a revision surgery in my right leg. And at that point, that's when I started having, you know, the thoughts of, is this possible anymore? And I think something that really stuck out to me was, could I play lacrosse again? Sure, possibly, but could I play at this level? That was a whole different story. Mm -hmm. um, so my winter of my sophomore year, I decided to medically disqualify, um, which it definitely was really, really tough. Um, I think one of the hardest things for me was, like I said, growing up in Maryland, there were 
four girls from my club team, my age group that I played with every summer that are here on my team at Maryland. So I think it was really hard just kind of knowing where I stood with them and knowing that I couldn't be out there when these are girls that, you know, we trained the same way we played together our whole lives, you know, and they were out there living our dreams. And I wasn't, I think that was the hardest thing for me. Um, and even the rest of my team, I would say majority of my team is from Maryland, meaning I had played against these girls all throughout club and high school and kind of knew what I was capable of. And it was really, really hard knowing that I could be out there and I wasn't able to. So I would say the biggest way that it affected my mental health. Um, I think I had a little bit of everything that Dr. Hall touched on, you know, following the surgery, you definitely feel isolated. Um, I definitely f had moments of depression, anxiety. Um, also that worry, like, did I make the right decision with medically DQing? Was it the right choice for me? Was that a bad decision? Could I really come back and play? Um, you know, I think the what ifs really impacted me a lot. Kind of like, well, what if I tried? Or if I was out there, would I be scoring more goals than her? Or what position would I be at? That type of thing. Um, and for me, I, I think time is the biggest, the biggest help. It sounds so cliche, but time really is what got me through it. Perfect, and Garrett. Yeah. Um, so my, uh, my injury, uh, is a little more common. Uh, it's, uh, I've been having a uh, shoulder problems, uh, started, I mean, just, uh, wrestling uh, as a sport is just incredibly hard on your body. Uh, and definitely shoulders is one of them. Um, but, uh, specifically, uh, mine started my senior year of high school. Uh, I was out at a super big tournament. Uh, it's considered the toughest high school tournament like in-season tournament uh the iron man and uh i was the number one seed projected to win and uh semifinals match uh like i think it was sometime in the second period uh dislocated my shoulder and uh you know i finished through that match uh even though i was just all i could think about was my shoulder um you know came off the mat i was heartbroken because you know i i felt like i could have won that match and gone on and won the tournament. Um, but then, you know, I'm like, Oh crap, something's wrong. Like, like, like it shouldn't feel like this and stuff. Um, so, uh, got it, uh, put back in, strapped some ice on it and then found out I had to wrestle like right away, like 30 minutes later, try to wrestle that match and, uh, ended up, uh, forfeiting out cause I couldn't put weight on it. Um, and then, uh, you know, talked with, uh, the athletic trainers at my high school and, and coaches and stuff took the next week off, which was another big tournament um, that, you know, I could have done some damage at it as well. And, you know, was a little salty about, but uh, you know, I really basically just took two weeks off and then just got back to the season. Like nothing happened. Uh, and then finished that year uh, with a state title and a second place finish at the national prep tournament, um, which I, um, you know, had a great chance of winning as well. But, uh, you know, I, I was pretty happy that I was able to finish that year, um, even though I hurt my shoulder pretty bad. Um, and, uh, you know, it felt pretty good. I didn't have to, like, do too much for it. Um, and then came here. Uh, we had that uh, that initial COVID year that was all screwed up, um, wrestled uh, all in conference. Um, and, you know, throughout the year, like, the difference in competition was pretty big. Um, but, you know, I was, I was holding up pretty well, at least physically. Um, you know, I, I definitely had some uh, maturity to do because, you know, I'm like high school wrestling, you know, as a senior, you're, you're the you know, big man on campus type deal. And uh, like, you're able to uh, go through it. Um, but now, you know, I'm a 19, 18, 19 year old kid wrestling these guys who are 24, uh and they're just you know they're men like some of them have kids and families and stuff and I'm like geez this is crazy um but you know that first year uh went pretty well but uh uh stuff with my shoulder kept creeping up and uh you know I just hammered the rehab and you know just prayed and hoped for the best and then uh sophomore year um I was planning on redshirting we had a guy transfer in 
um, you know, give me time to develop, had that guy transfer in so he could start and just, you know, so I could develop and be able to wrestle these, you know, fathers that I'm, that I'm going after. Um, but uh, during one of our uh, preseason workouts at the football stadium, uh, my uh, started getting a lot of numbness and pain in my arm. And like during wrestling practices, like they're just like, you know, depending on how hard and long the practice was, like we get deep into it. And like, I just would like lose all strength and feeling in my arm. And uh, so that, so then I uh, went and saw a doc about it, uh, got imaging, found out how I had a, a pretty shredded labrum and uh, uh, from when I initially heard it in high school. And then uh, because, you know, I went two plus years on it, um, there was a cyst growing of uh, where the labrum was torn and it was compressing the nerve that innervates, you know, your arm. Uh, and, you know, when I was going, like the cyst would like get aggravated and it would apply pressure on that nerve and I'd start losing feeling and getting that uh, nerve pain symptom type stuff. So uh, got that scoped out uh, my sophomore year in November. Um, rehab back, felt amazing, like ready to get at it. Uh, I got cleared to return to sport like a month and a half earlier than like the average person. And I'm like, oh yeah, like I got this. I'm back on the mat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this again. Like I missed it so much. Like I'm gonna, like, it's gonna be great. And then uh, I think it was like a week or two into practicing again. Uh, just a huge amount of pain, like discomfort, like couldn't sleep, couldn't think, couldn't like, you know, practice do wrestling or anything because uh just like my shoulder was hurting so bad but I was like oh well the doctor told me you know there's going to be some a little bit of pain and discomfort to go through I'm like maybe this is what he's talking about so I went through all of last summer uh dealing with this pain doing rehab still practicing and like two and a half months later I'm just like yeah now th this this is too much I, I gotta I gotta go see what's up with this uh went and got more imaging done found out that, uh, uh, like my shoulder socket, like, um, kind of like not exactly sure what happened, but like, there's, you know, a lot of, uh, bone loss in it. Um, you know, like your shoulder is supposed to look like this. Mine looked like this where it didn't oh. like cover most of the joint. And basically any movement I had with my arm, it was like, uh, like subluxating really bad or like dislocating, like basically every time I moved it. Um, you know, which made a lot of sense while I was in a lot of pain. Um, so, uh, met with, uh, met with the shoulder guy, the, the specialist for the UMD medical system. He told me about the operation. It's a super weird operation. It's called a, uh, posterior ladder J where they take the distal tibia, like the, one of the shin bones, um, of a cadaver, shape it up and then screw it into your your shoulder to like kind of replace your socket, which, um, you know, I, I was like fascinated by it. Uh, cause like, you know, I'm, I'm a, wanting to be a PT. So I'm like, Oh man, that, that sounds crazy. And like, that sounds like it works. Um, but, uh, that initial visit when he was telling me about the surgery and stuff, he, uh, like right out of the gate was just like, you're going to be done with wrestling, man. Like, like, like the, you need to have this surgery done if you want to, you know, have, like a normal life at all, but like, like wrestling's off the table. And, uh, and that was like a month before I even had the surgery. Like, this is my first time meeting this guy. And, you know, like right away, he's just like, sorry, no, no more, no more of your sport for you. And, uh, you know, that, that really crushed me. Um, because, uh, you know, he hadn't seen me go through rehab. He hadn't, oh, he hadn't, been inside my body to like do the surgery and like have it go well or have it go bad. And, uh, yeah, that, uh, that was just really hard hearing that. Cause you know, I never like, yeah, I had these physical problems, but, uh, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to get this fixed. I'm going to like crush rehab. Like I have been doing and I'm going to get back at it. Like I never left. And, uh, you know, now it's like, you know, my future in this sports, uh, like up in the year. Um, so, uh, yeah, now, uh, I'm almost six months post-op, um, had the surgery. It went really well. Um, all my checkups have been really positive so far. Rehab has been going well. Um, but, uh, 
yeah, I had my latest checkup this past Tuesday and, uh, you know, the doc was like, you know, just really making it crystal clear, um, about like, yeah, like, like, you know, if this surgery that we did on you, like gets messed up at all from anything, like there's no, there's not really a next step we have to do besides, you know, a total joint replacement. And, um, you know, like I'm, I'm 21, like having a joint replacement in your twenties, that's like, that's not a good thing. Um, but then also the shoulder joint, um, in itself, it's just really, really bad, um, and tricky to do with like replacements and anything like that. And like, there's always revisions that have to be done with joint replacements and shoulders like never really take well and stuff. So, um, you know, just like now it's like, okay, yeah. Like, do I want to, you know, try and have a little more glory in my, in my arena of playing or, you know, do I like, or like, do I need to focus on, you know, pursuing my career of being a PT, you know, focusing on being a dad and playing with my kids, you know, being able to carry the groceries when I want to, uh, you know, being, being able to be recreationally active, like lift weights, uh, maybe help out like with a wrestling club, you know, something a little lighter. Um, yeah. And, uh, so yeah, that, that's my injury, but, uh, mental health wise, you know, like I said, with that first meeting, you know, it crushed me. Um, I was, uh, I've been working with uh, Chris, one of the staff members in the sports psych department here. Shout out to Chris. He's a rock star, really awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I was kind of operating in this mode of like, you know, I'm Garrett Kappas, the wrestler. Like I am my sport. I am, I am the athlete. Um, and, you know, like I got the rug snatched out from under me um, with the doc saying like, yeah, wrestling's done. And now, I didn't feel like I had, uh, like I had a lot of the same symptoms that uh, Dr. Hall brought up. Um, but the biggest thing was a sense of belonging and like purpose in life. Um, Cause you know, like, like as me operating as, as the wrestler, as the athlete, like, like, you know, and like my purpose and like where I felt like I belonged was like, feel, felt like I was, it was taken away from me. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so, uh, it was, it was those first few months, um, or like that first month leading up to the surgery was really bad. Um, and, uh, like depression was very bad. Um, and, uh, it could have, it could have gotten really bad as, a you know, I was having a lot of, uh, suicidal ideations, um, and, uh, got to a point where I was like, you know, writing notes and stuff. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then finally got help, uh, then, and then, uh, you know, still like, I'm way better from that now, but, uh, you know, still a lot of, um, uh, like a lot of time and effort needs to be put in. Like Sophia said, time's a good medicine. Um, it, that's definitely true, but, uh, you know, I definitely need more time to get that going. And, uh, now in the present, uh, really like making that decision of retirement um is like at hand uh so you know fo focusing on that and handling that and then that that loss um because you know it's kind of like losing a loved one losing right. losing a sibling um some part of you so mm -hmm. yeah well thank you both for sharing that um i definitely appreciate it and i think this is something that our listeners like can definitely benefit from I know you mentioned um, Chris from Sports Psych and Dr. Hall, look, your team is like continuing to enhance sports psychology. So what resources can you share um, that can help student athletes transitioning out of athletic student injuries? Yeah. They mentioned uh, the um, support group. Yeah. So both Garrett and Sophia, thank you for sharing. Um, I know it takes a lot. You know, I'm not you, but obviously I work with student athletes every day and, you know, we work a lot with injury and Although we have all these statistics, right, and and everyone shares their story, no one ever thinks it's going to happen to them, you know, and even you may share a similar or Garrett, to your point, you said you have a very common injury, but even once you get there, the repair or your, you know, your, your story is completely different from anyone else's. 
So it's a lot. And, you know, I just commend you for being able to share that, you know, with us and with the with the listeners, because, you know, it's something that, you know, we we don't want to talk about, but it's important that we do talk about and not just injuries, but just life, you know, after sport in general. Right. Um, and so with that being said, yeah, like, yes, how, you know, Gary said, and I mentioned earlier, um, you know, each each person in, in my department, you know, we each each sports psychology uh, person in sports psychology in sports psychology department <laughs> um, is a point person for a team. So Chris Williams, he's one of the clinicians that works um, with wrestling, and he also works with women's lacrosse as well. And then the other clinician is Jackie Albanes. Um, and then we're also interviewing for another position. Um, but at that, at any rate, um, we are starting different groups and different support groups for student athletes because, right, you might not want to come see us, you know, every um, every week. And or you might get to the point where you're like, OK, I no longer need um, one on one therapy or treatment, but I still do need support. Right. And so the model that we're creating here now at University of Maryland is um, when an athlete is injured for them to, you know, initially come to see me. And sometimes, oftentimes the athlete is like, I'm good. I just want to go to the fitness, to PT. I just want to, you know, get back, see the athletic trainers and let me get back out there. And, you know, you really don't think about the fact that, oh, I do need to see mental health. So it's a, you know, requirement now that you see mental health. Um, right at injury, whether it's like right before um, surgery or right after, and then we see you post-surgery, and then we see you uh, before you return to play. And each of those stages are, you know, completely different for a lot of athletes, like you have a different mindset. And so the groups too, um, talking about the groups that we created, so Mr. Williams, uh, Chris Williams, he's going to, um, or he started the the support group for um injury and so that's important because even after you return to play right like you might be triggered differently than you were you know on the front end on the front end you're like oh I'm just trying to get out there I'm just trying to get back you know you're just trying to get past the physical therapy aspect past the surgery you just want to get back out there and then you can learn that once you're back out there geez I may have gone too soon or you know maybe my body hasn't healed properly or correctly or unfortunately, like Garrett and Sophia, you know, maybe at now I, I have to medically retire. Um, so to be able to, you know, have a support where not only are we here, you know, me, like me, we, meaning like this sports psychology staff, not only are we here to meet with you individually, but then you also have a support group of other student athletes that have gone through similar instances like you have. And, you know, it's, it's a safe space to kind of talk about it out loud, to talk about how you're feeling, to talk about you know, the, the fears and Garrett, to your, to your point, the losses, right? Like this is legit, like a loss. Like you have to grieve this. Um, this is something that you guys have been engaged in and doing since you were, you know, in diapers. Right. And like Sophia, like you said, like you look up to it and you see your, your, your teammates, you know, that you play club, club ball with, and you know, you're thinking in your head, like, geez, I could, I, that, that could, that should be me. Um, and you have a lot of self depreciating thoughts. Um, and so Garrett, you know, again, I just commend you for being able to open up and to share about, you know, the suicidal ideations, because those are real too, even the passive ones, right? Like I would be better off if I wasn't here or my, my team would be better off if I wasn't here. Um, sometimes athletes report that, um, you know, I'm, I'm taking up space or I'm, I'm, I'm using someone else's opportunity. If they're on scholarship, like I'm using someone else, using up someone else's opportunity. So all those, you know, negative um, thoughts come up and those depressive type thoughts come up. And so, like I said, not only are we here to meet with you guys and with the athletes individually, but that group aspect, that support aspect that, you know, only you guys can experience is something that's vital to, you know, your um, mental health, right? And not only just your physical health and being able to get back and, and post-injury and life outside of sport, but just who you are as a person, like who you are holistically outside, like your identity outside of sport. Um, and so in addition to the groups, like I, like we said, we meet individually and cognitive behavior therapy um, is primary, um, one of the, one of the um, tools that we can use. And so that's, you know, identifying those negative thoughts, um, the underlying thoughts, where they're coming from, and then how to change those thoughts and change the behavior. 
Um, and then acceptance therapy too, acceptance and commitment therapy is one of the techniques of therapies that we utilize. Um, relaxation techniques are very beneficial. Um, so guided imagery, meditation, um, and 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 just mindfulness are, are useful tools and techniques along with body scans. And body scans are very similar to meditation and relaxation. It kind of gets you in touch with your physical symptoms and what they, and attaching some meaning to them. Um, oftentimes, you know, when we experience, sometimes when we experience stress and anxiety, you can have a physiological symptom related to that and you not know what it means. Meaning like you can have tightness in your chest. A lot of times people have, you know, tightness in their stomachs or in their gut area and you not know what that means. So, um, Engaging in body scans can kind of help to, like I said, attach or identify that physical feeling that you're feeling physically with an emotion. Um, and so like I have the emotion wheel on my wall. And so, um, you know, being able to identify what emotion are you experiencing, like the underlying emotion, maybe you're sad, but you might also not just be sad, but like you might be experiencing some guilt or some frustration or depression, or, you know, all these other other thoughts that, you know, otherwise you may not have identified if you weren't working with a clinician, like a mental health clinician, a psychologist like myself, or sports psychologist, and or having that group to help support you and process and, you know, move through that. Wow, I didn't even know you guys offered all that. So that's amazing. <laughs> um, that's definitely exciting. And it's something that like, I wish I would have had as a student athlete, I went to a um, division two school so we didn't have as many resources and things like that so I'm glad that stu students are getting these resources now um, I know you mentioned identity being a big part of that so Sophia and Garrett how if applicable did you or have you filled a void of not being able to compete and what identities have you been able to tap into amidst the transition yeah so I think uh, both Garrett and Dr. Hall touched on this a little bit but being athletes at the level that we have competed at our whole lives, we attribute most of our success to our athletics. Um, like Garrett said, he was Garrett the wrestler. I was Sophia the lacrosse player. Um, you know, the lacrosse player going to Maryland, which Maryland lacrosse has been known to be like the top program in the whole country. So it definitely has been um, difficult to kind of find that, to fill that void and find something else to find my worth in. Um, for me, I think I really found it in school, which helped me out a lot. Um, I think that I wasn't able to put all my energy and effort and hard work into lacrosse. So I turned and put that into school. And, you know, that's kind of what I tell myself. The reason I got into PA school this early, the reason that I was able to apply as a junior in undergrad was because of my injury. You know, my injury didn't hold me back. It just kind of shifted my vision. And I was able to put all of my hard work into school and it paid off in the end. So I think it is important to find something else. Um, and it doesn't have to be something like school. It can be, I really was into journaling right after my surgeries. And that's not necessarily something that you would attribute success to, but just being able to sit down every day and say, I get to journal or I journaled yesterday, something like that. Um, it's, it's really about the little things, I think. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I, I agree a lot with uh, what Sophia brought up, um, you know, uh, and like, again, uh, like speaking personally, like, uh, you know, as I said, Garrett, the wrestler, like I attributed so much of my life to my sport and activity, um, you know, because like uh, I was able to go to a prestigious private school for high school um, because I got discovered at a wrestling tournament, um, you know, and I was able to have opportunities uh, through that as well. Um, and then, you know, being able to come to college, uh, like I would have had to taken huge amounts of loans out, uh, to go to college if I either didn't have the sport or didn't have the scholarship for it. Um, so now, you know, have, being a scholarship athlete in the sport I love and being able to go to college with, you know, without having to worry about those loans and stuff, um, you know, and then having all the connections, having, uh, you know, this path academically and socially and all that stuff. Um, you know, I attribute like so much of it to, to my sport. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, like, like, you know, you definitely have to grieve your, grieve your time, uh, with it. Um, like we 
like we all said, it's like losing a loved one type deal. Um, but, you know, like kind of like filling it in with other things like for school. Um, I'm now a, a, a board member of the kinesiology student organization, which is my undergraduate major. Um, I help set up with uh, like sports and social um, different like activities that we have. Um, and I also help set up community service opportunities um, for anyone who's a kines student. Um, and then just like the School of Public Health as well. Um, and then also uh, do a little bit with like peer advising type stuff as well, you know, helping with like schedules and whatnot with that. Um, and then also uh, getting a bit more into um, uh, with stuff at Gossett, like I'm a, a member of the uh, Leadership Academy that Maryland made runs. Um, haven't been able to make any of the sessions because of a uh, a uh, grad school prereq class that's at night, but uh, you know, uh, been able to still work on that. Um, and uh, that that's been a big thing. Uh, you know, just like trying to expand my horizons. You know, uh, like dive in with my schoolwork, dive in with other passions. Um, you know, and like like our our sports, no matter what sport it is at the D one level, like it's it's like a full time job. Um, and then we're also students on top of it. And then also some of us may have like actual jobs as well. So like you don't have time to think or anything, um, but, you know, having this time away from sport and, uh, you know, the like retirement uh, coming up um, where I get that that ball rolling. Uh, I've been able to set up uh, like a lot more like internships and stuff to work on my uh, resume. Um, I, uh, I applied to a uh, accelerated uh, BS and MPH program uh, through the School of Public Health um, to where I'll uh, get my uh, master's in public health focused on healthcare management um, at the end of my fifth year here, um, which I'm not looking forward to the work, but you know, uh, that's something I probably wouldn't be able to do if I was, you know, still, still uh, on the wrestling team and a competing athlete where that takes up so much time. Um, so, you know, just, uh, you know, keep finding, find things to like, yeah, fill in that void, but don't just fill it in. Um, you know, go, go after your passions, find new passions. Like, like I'm trying to learn guitar, uh, you know, that, like, that's something, you know, using, using my time where, I, where I'd be sweaty and, uh, rolling around in the room. Like now I'm, you know, trying to get into guitar and stuff. So, uh, yeah, just like, go after your passions, find new passions, you know, just dive into things, but don't just fill in the void because you can um, be intentional, just like you are with your sport, you know, be intentional, try to get better every day and, you know, improve uh, 1%. And then uh, um, another thing that's uh, helped a lot is just like, you know, cause uh, like with how low I got from my surgery, um, you know, I kind of like, you know, didn't, didn't feel the belonging and purpose and like, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I, uh, uh, one great resource that we have on the wrestling team, uh, Daryl Colbert, he's a, uh, uh, FCA liaison and like our kind of like our character coach, like, uh, he doesn't have like any degrees on his name, but he's a PhD in life. Like he is, he's just, he's a really good dude and he's been through the works and, uh, you know, just having, having someone like him and then, uh, you know, uh, helping me like reconnect to my faith, um, through, uh, Jesus and everything. That's been really good. Uh, really good for me as well. Um, you know, just finding something I can believe in and where it feels like some, like something or someone believes in me as well. Um, cause, uh, I felt like I didn't have that, uh, with, you know, the injury and, uh, you know, uh, having to deal with, uh, the mental side of retiring. So. That's great. I like how both of you kind of tapped into like untouched potentials and passions. So that's super exciting. Um, what going looking at the beyond, like what's next? What advice would you give to student athletes to think about the bigger picture outside of sports? Because you never know when an injury could happen. Um, yeah, I would just say that you are bigger than your sport. You are not defined by your athletic abilities. You are not defined by your sport. Even people who go pro with their sports, they are still more than an athlete. Um, and I think it's important to to find what else is in there, like what other identities you have. Even if it's little things like I'm a great chef, something like that. 
um, you are more. And I think utilizing some of those preventative measures, like Dr. Hall had me had mentioned, um, always staying in touch with your mental health. Um, actually, one of my public health professors, his favorite saying is that nobody is ashamed to say, I rolled my ankle and I saw a doctor for it and I got a prescription. But people are still ashamed to say, I'm struggling mentally and I need to seek help. And I think it's a stigma that um, we all can work towards eliminating. And the first step in that is just everyone kind of getting in touch with their mental health and utilizing the resources that are out there. For sure. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty big bar from your professor there. That, but no, that that's definitely true. Um, and uh, uh, you know, like Sophia said, um, you know, like like how I was saying, you know, I'm I was thinking I'm Garrett Kappas, the wrestler. Like you're not just your sport. You're like I'm Garrett Kappas, who happens to wrestle. Uh, and like, I'm also a kinese major. I'm also an aspiring doctor of physical therapy. I also like to cook. I'm also trying, but struggling really hard to play guitar. Uh, you know, like all, like I'm, you're all of these things. They're just, they're just labels. They're not who you are. Um, so, you know, just like, like, don't be defined by your sport. It's pretty, it's pretty hard not to, but, uh, yeah, just, you know, they're all, they're all labels. They're all, all activities that you do. Um, you know, and just like have that, but then also, um, you know, don't, if you have like anything going on, whether it's from an injury, whether it's like your girlfriend dumped you, whether it's like, you know, uh, you got a D on a test that you thought you got an A on just any, anything that like, like you have going on, like, you know, don't, don't hold it in, reach out, speak out. Um, and like, like with those preventative measures, but also it doesn't have to be, you know, with like a Dr. Hall or like a sports psych or um, your coach or something, just like talk to your roommate, talk to your dad, talk to, you know, talk to your dog, even though they're not going to understand what you're saying and stuff, but, you know, just have that, have that outlet, you know, and uh, like really just, um, uh, you know, have that connection um, with others as well. Um, so yeah, just, don't be quiet, reach out. Um, yeah. I appreciate that. Dr. Hall, do you have any advice or any specific techniques student athletes can use when they are either like transitioning from an injury or having a career in the injury? Yeah, um, every, pretty much everything that both Garrett and Sophia said, um, I just echo it. And, you know, um, Sophia mentioned journaling. And in fact, in my office, I have... <laughs> Um, like small journals uh, that I hand out to student athletes that don't have their own journal. Um, it's, you know, journaling is so important. It relieves stress. Um, it helps to get the issue outside of yourself. And sometimes when we think and hold on to stuff and keep it inside of our head, um, our brains want things to make it make sense. It just, that's just what our brains do. It's called confabulation um, in the in the psychological term, but our brains want things to make sense. And so, you know, sometimes when we're able to get those things out and write them down and read them back over, you're like, oh, like, you know, maybe my math isn't math in, or maybe one isn't equaling, you know, two. So being able to get that out. And like Garrett said, even that's why, like, even talking to your dog, even though they're not going to, you know, respond back to you um, in our human English terms, um, our language, but it's the point of getting it outside of yourself, right? And not keeping it, um, like, tucked away and, you know, hidden. So, um, you know, the benefit is, you know, just talking to someone, um, building connections with other people, not isolating yourself, as difficult as it may seem, and, you know, injuries and, you know, when we're feeling less than it kind of, you know, our brains have that way of making us think we're the only ones and no one will ever, you know, understand how we're feeling. But that absolutely is not true. Right. So just being able to, you know, having someone that you can talk those things through. Um, and then, you know, if you feel like you can't um, or maybe if you feel like someone is in your life, you know, isn't. Um, hearing you or you just don't feel comfortable enough, you know, then maybe seeking, you know, um, mental health services from a licensed professional and, you know, and doing so if you're, if, you know, you're one of our student athletes, we are here for you um, just about 24 <laughs> seven, you know, you can always reach out to us. Um, even, even if we aren't that point person for your team, 
you can still reach out to one of our one of one of the clinicians here. Um, you can also, if you're at the University of Maryland, be seen at the at the counseling center at the University Health Center. Um, the beauty in having us on staff here um, with the sports psychology team is, you know, there's no cap or no limit on how frequently or how often or, you know, you can see us, you can see us for one time, you can see us for 10 times, or you can see us throughout, you know, your, your um, athletic career. And just like, you know, if you unfortunately do have a sports ending, ending injury, you still can be seen by sports psychologist, by sports psychology. So, um, you know, you have those resources. And um, then I would just say, like, like Garrett was saying, if it doesn't have to be, you know, Christian or Jesus or God, but um, it's, it's um, statistically known that um, when you have or believe in a power outside of yourself or higher than yourself, and also when you practice gratitude, then that tends to help with, you know, just mental health in general. Um, it tends to help with healing, um, both physically and mentally, because you don't feel like all the power is within yourself, right? So if you have an injury and you're like, geez, I'm not um, getting back or I'm not healing or whatever as quickly as I thought I was, you're not putting that pressure or as much pressure on yourself, like what's wrong with me? Um, you know, you can then look to someone outside of yourself for that. And then also practicing gratitude. You know, it might seem really, really cliche, but just being grateful of the small things, right? Like even being grateful for this opportunity to have this podcast that, you know, these two are able to share their own story and then possibly connect again, very cliche, but connect to just one person. Um, that's someone that beforehand maybe didn't have that outlet, right? Um, and so going back to your first question earlier, Sydney, why I'm so like, I could go on and on for days about why I'm so passionate about mental health. Um, but just in general, you know, the cliche, I'm sorry, the stigma that mental health has, you know, people, you know, wanted to keep things to themselves and wanted to be feeling like you have to be strong and no one can understand. Um, that's just something that I, I will always and forever want to like break, break through because, you know, people need people. We saw that through COVID, right? If you didn't know before, you know, through COVID that, you know, people, we're just social beings. We're created that way. And so we need that support and we need the, um, you know, support from others. And it doesn't, again, like Garrett said, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a doctor or a mental health clinician um, or a licensed clinician, but still having someone. And then, yes, if you do need a clinician, then certainly, you know, engage with that person. Because again, if I break my arm, you know, I'm not just going to put a Band-Aid on it, right? So, you know, we're we're here, you know, licensed professionals, you know, for that reason. Perfect. Well, I just want to thank all of you, not only for your time, but for sharing everything. Um, it's definitely something that's near and dear to me, and I appreciate everything that you were willing to share today. Um, I will be sure to link your LinkedIn's and ways that people can connect with you um, in the podcast bio. So to all of our listeners, make sure to reach out to Garrett, Sophia, or Dr. Hall um, with any questions, concerns, or just if you want to talk. I think they all are more than willing to, to share and just be that resource to you. Um, on another hand, make sure you're following Marilyn Maid and UMD Sports Psych on Instagram and Twitter um, and connect with us on LinkedIn as well. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Be on the lookout for what's next. Thank you. Thank you.